In this video, we will see how to create a circuit with Arduino to turn a LED on and off by pressing a button. The circuit we need to create is very simple. We basically need to, using our Arduino board, choose a pin. That will be an input. And it is the one that will register the button press. So we need to create a circuit that will allow us to capture from the digital pin, which we will choose as the power supply, the high state of the button press. Typically, this is done in this way. That is by placing what is called a pull-up resistor. Here we place a resistor that works well from 4700 for 700K. So a fairly high resistance. And it is set to a potential of 5V. When we press the button, place on the breadboard this potential will essentially be applied to the input of the pin we have selected. Let's say that in the exercise we will use pin number 6. When pin number 6 is pressed then we will instruct another pin, for example pin 11, which we will configure as an output to turn on our LED. We know that we will do this through our 220 ohm resistor. And here the anode of the LED's cathode will be connected. And here we will have the ground so the moment we press the button, the LED will emit light. So simply put, this is the circuit we need to build. So what do we need to make this circuit? We need an Arduino board, a resistor, be an LED, in this case green, and a button. How does the button work? The button has a particular shape, as you can see. It has four terminals. The terminal that we can identify with the letters A, B, C, D. As shown in the figure, the terminals are slightly curved up. So depending on how we look at them, the inclination of the terminal is more or less noticeable. So it will be enough to look at it from the right position to understand which are the two terminals that are already connected. So as in figure A and B. And they do terminals B and C. So when we press, we establish an electrical contact. Point A with point B and point C and point D with point B and point C. So this is a double button, as they say, precisely because it gives us more connection possibilities. Obviously, we can also use just one part of it if we need, as in this case, to physically interrupt only one wire. Let's first see how to create the circuit using the Tinkercad simulator, and then we will physically build it once we have seen that it works. So let's start with Arduino, let's start with our breadboard, and in the meantime, we set up our resistor that will limit the current to the power supply with which we will power our LED. And we place it here. Then we take an LED. So, as usual, we connect it with the anode already connected to one terminal of the resistor. We know that the other will go to ground. For convenience, something that is often done is to bring the power supplies and grounds directly onto the breadboard because we will use them multiple times during the circuit prototyping. So we bring the 5 volts onto the entire red line and with the black color we also make a ground connection. So we bring the 5 volts back to red. Okay, so at this moment we have powered the breadboard making it easier to connect the various components we have on the breadboard to the 5 volts and the ground. So let's immediately connect to ground. The cathode of LED. So we've done that. The other end of the LED's resistor. Obviously we need to power it. Let's make it blue. And who will provide us with the 5 volts to power the LED? We said pin number LLM. We could choose any, of course, we chose 11 as the terminal, as the pin, which will power the LED. But in this case, the LED needs to be powered only when I press a button. So we go and take a button from the component library, button that we place across the breadboard. Let's say at this point, because as you can see, the top part of this row 23, all these pins are connected to each other. They are short-circuited, but they are physically separated. From the other block of pins, also of row 23, which is located on the lower part of the breadboard. So, in this way, we have correctly positioned the button. However, regardless of this, what we are going to utilize is this 
This bridge between terminal 1A and terminal 2A, which will be short circuited when we press the button. So, in the meantime, we apply the potential, the 5V reference that we will need to power pin 6, which is the one that will read the button state. So what do we do? We take the resistor. We definitely connect one end to ground, and we connect it here. Since we have already distributed the Arduino ground across the entire breadboard through this black wire, so we have connected the resistor to ground. Then we bring the 5V directly to this side of the button. The one that is interrupted by the other side. So the connection between 1A and 2A will only be made when I press it, and thus this other part, which will be powered when the button is pressed. We connect the button to the other end of the resistor. So, in this way, when we press the button, we will have a stable 5 volts across this resistor. And, obviously, this point is already connected through the button itself. To this other line, number 22, so I just need to connect it to the pin we use the green color, number 6. Pin number 6, practically the output of the button. So in this way, when I click the button, it's as if I am short-circuiting this point, this point, and this point. So they will become a single potential node. And thus the state of pin 6 will become high because it will be brought to a potential of 5 volts. So what do we need to do in terms of code? Well, first of all, obviously we need to go and set up our usual setup functions. And, 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 and loop. Okay, in the setup part. First, actually, before the setup, let's do something. Let's declare the variable with which we will call the button, which will be true if the button is pressed and will be false. If the button is not pressed, to declare this type of variable, we need to use the word, bool, the bool button. How many comma? We are defining a variable within the code called indeed button because we are saying that this variable makes sense if it is true or if it is false if it is true or if it is false. We will see this in the Arduino reference on the page therefore reference we find among the variables. Indeed we see that there is the data type bool which is used precisely to declare a certain variable and obviously when we declare it we can also directly assign it a starting value, so we can also set the button directly to true, meaning true initially, or rather. We start with a false. We initialize it as boolean and say it is false. Another important thing, therefore, is to declare with the pin mode function that pin 11 is an output, because it is what we use to power the LED. Well, pin 6. We said we use it as an input because it is the one with which we read the state of the button, so it will be an input, therefore pin 11 is an output, p6 is an input within the loop. At this point, what do we need to do? We need to read the state of pin 6, and how do we do it? Simply, we say that the button variable, which is a boolean, so it can be true or false, will be equal to digital. This time read not write because I want to read the state of pin number 6. I can do it also because I declared it as an input, so it should work. At this point, using a very classic film structure programming language that is simply, if it's true, do this, if it's false, do that, we use the if decision structure constructor. And basically we tell it, look, if it button so if the button is true, meaning the button is pressed, you will do something, otherwise do something else. So if pressed, what do we do? We set pin 11 high. So we turn on the LED. If the button is not pressed, the LED pin 11 should definitely remain low.
to make the simulation work better and in general to not overburden the work because it's useful for the microcontroller. At the end of the loop to always include a small delay, maybe even just 10 milliseconds. It doesn't hurt, so if I haven't written it incorrectly, the syntax should already work, so the simulation begins. You see that at this moment, the button is not pressed, everything is off. If I go to press the button, the LED lights up, so you release the mouse. And when I click, every time I click, it lights up at what frequency? With a 10 millisecond delay, so we can't even notice it. I am adding at this moment something fundamental regarding the ability to turn on and off what is called the serial monitor. This is very useful when debugging. And we will also see it in the program part, right? Which is what we use to program Arduino. What does the serial monitor mean? The serial monitor is a very convenient tool that needs to be initialized within the unit to be used. So obviously only the first time. So we stop the simulation, add a very simple command, which is this one, serial dot begin 9600. What is this? It is a command that we are giving to Arduino. To say I want to activate the serial monitor because I want to write information in real time as it happens on this screen. In this way, I can, for example, write down all the text that might be useful for me to intercept the state of the variables. For example, if the button arc is pressed, I want to write, and this is done with a function called serial dot uh, print len. There is also serial dot print, which writes something serial dot print len. It's different because after it writes, it goes to a new line, so it's more readable. So if the button is uh, pressed, besides being set high, the state of pin 11. So if I turn on the LED, I want to write, for example, a sentence. So you press the button. Even an exclamation point, always with a comma. In the end, if the button is not pressed, the button is not eh, pressed. Let's see if it works. See, now the message appears and the button is not pressed. If I press the button, the sentence changes. You press the button. This is very convenient for debugging. Instead of writing the sentence, if I wanted to display the value of the variable directly, for example, of the button. So if we put text, it should be enclosed in quotes. If we don't directly put the variable, look at what happens since it's a Boolean. So either true or false. So in, in computing, it means either zero or one. When I initialize, you see that it appears, a row of zeros appears. If I press the button, they become one. Every time I press the button, it becomes one. And with this, we give the command to the LED, which lights up. Let's see how to bring this code and this schematic into reality. We take our breadboard and Arduino, then Pin number 11 through the resistor goes to power the LED if pin 11 is indeed brought to a high state. And the cathode of the LED, as you can see, is connected to ground. In fact, we can make a small modification just to be more consistent as we did with the schematic. In the simulation, I put the ground on the minus of the breadboard. So I bring it across the entire breadboard. So in this way, I have distributed the ground connections. So to connect this LED to ground, I simply take this pin and connect it here to any point on the blue line. This way, I have distributed it on the negative. Let's say on the ground, I take the button. So pay attention to the direction to interrupt. The correct, the correct, the correct contact. I take a, a 5K resistor. In this case, it is not particularly important. It just needs to be large enough, mainly to keep things stable and to have a reference at 5 volts relative to the ground. So one end of this must be connected. Must be connected to ground, so I put it on the negative. Obviously, I need to remember to connect, even if it's on the other side of the breadboard, the ground, so I also connect the negative here. This way, we have connected the ground on both points. 
then uh, on this side of the button, so to the right of the button, I have one terminal of the resistor and the other connected to ground. Now what do we need to do? We need to bring the 5 volts to the other side of the button. Okay, so we take another connection, we take the 5 volts from the breadboard used by Arduino. So from the pin labeled 5 volts, I take them and distribute them on the uh, red line, the one below on the breadboard. So now here, 5 volts will run on all the terminals of the of the red line on the bottom part. Then, at this point, I take the 5 volts and bring them to this side of the button. At this particular point in time, the very last thing that I absolutely need to do is to carefully bring over the other side of the button. So this, one, two, three pins. We need to bring them to pin number six, as we said. So this one here. So the six will receive the five volt command only when I press the button. All that's left is to connect the USB to Arduino. This way, we provide power. At this moment, obviously nothing happens because we still need to program it. So we move on. So we copy. This code, in theory, works at least in the simulator. It has done its job. I paste, so the code. Load. I wait for it to... I get the message that the upload is complete and it went well. And if we now go to press the button, every time we press the button, the LED lights up.